Welcome back. We got cut off, I'm afraid, with the hailstorm. So this is part two of Tuesday Evening Prayer. Let us come now to an important part of evening prayer, our intercessions. We are dutifully bound by the teachings of Christ, the barefoot Galilean, to share with him what lies heavy on our heart. And there's no use saying, oh, but there are others who need God more than me. That's arrogance. We are asked by Jesus. No, we're told by Jesus to ask his help. And I guess the reason why so many really make a mess of their lives and the spiritual life, and I'm really strong on this, and the reason why they get so many problems one after the other is because they know better than God or they don't ask from a loving heart and trust in a loving God. They go it alone. I've seen it so many times. And I've seen brothers and sisters who had a vocation leave because their ego got in the way. They felt it, they felt uncomfortable asking God for help when there were others more needy. Right, let's come to our intercessions and not be afraid to ask Christ for help. Because if we don't ask, we don't get, do we? Okay. My pages are stuck. Okay. Let us pray earnestly to the cosmic Christ Jesus our Lord. He tells us to watch and pray that we may not fall into temptation. Response, hear us, Lord, and have mercy. Lord Jesus, you promised to be with those who are gathered in your name. Like now, keep us united with you as we pray to our Father, Mother God, the God of many names, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Response, hear us, Lord, and have mercy. Cleanse your church of arrogance, uncharitableness and unforgiveness. Cleanse us from every stain of sin. Make her alive with hope and the power of your spirit responds. Hear us, Lord, and have mercy. Help us to care for our neighbor and show your love for all men and women. Through us, let the light of your salvation shine in the world responds. Hear us, Lord, and have mercy. Let your peace spread to the ends of the earth. Let all men see in the, in every place the signs of your presence. Response, hear us, Lord, and have mercy. We pray tonight that all your children of all faiths and none will be welcomed by all Christians at this time of Advent that they will open their hearts and not be so judgmental as in the past. Response, hear us, Lord, and have mercy. Bring the dead to everlasting happiness. Let glory and immortality, sorry, let glory and immortal life be theirs. Response, hear us, Lord, and have mercy. And here we pray for the soul of the late Martin McGuinness, who passed away <clears throat> excuse me, in the last 24 hours. Martin McGuinness was one of the IRA generals who was responsible for a lot of killings and bombings in mainland Britain and in Northern Ireland. But he turned a life. He turned a corner. It's not how we begin our life. It's how we end it. And he gave the last 10 years bringing together the peace process and being one of the deputy leaders of the um, Stormont government for the rule in Northern Ireland. And he did facilitate peace. And his best friend, who was his opposing enemy when he was a member of the IRA, was the Reverend Ian Paisley. But they became good friends. And that's through the power of prayer. So we celebrate his life, but we also acknowledge the hurts of his actions when he was with the IRA. And we also remember the many who were responsible and involved in violence, but also in the peace process. 
Tonight I want to remember Sister Jacqueline as we hold her now as she's struggling with cholecystitis. We also hold our dear Sister Jane in Coventry who's unwell and now on bed rest. We pray for all our beautiful brothers and sisters of our community and we remember those who've gone. Lisa, Sue, and we remember Richard. And we pray that the Spirit of God will continue to bless, protect and strengthen them. We pray for the Frank Lara Abbey of Peace and Compassion, God's vision for his children to unite them of different faiths, to live the monastic life together, both male and female. We say, Lord, we bless the delays. We bless those who are seeking for information, who want to be a part of a community that doesn't sit in judgment on the children of God who don't share their belief. Many in our community are of the Christian family and we resonate with the teachings of Christ. Love one another as I have loved you. So we pray tonight for universal peace. We pray for the children of God, of all faiths and none, who are starving in southern Sudan, where they've no water and no food. We pray for migrants, for refugees. We pray for our young people who've become so disillusioned with life that they're now taking spice, which actually leaves them like zombies and apparently Manchester here in the United Kingdom is the centre ground where many young people travel from all around the UK to Manchester to access this drug. It's illegal, it's dangerous, it's harmful and it kills. And it's sad to see so many who've taken the drug, they just end up motionless. So we pray that we can find a solution to this and spare our young people from opting out, who can't cope with society's pressures. But we pray for our religious leaders too, that they get involved with those who are marginalised, instead of giving lofty sermons in their fancy robes to see wearing one, but that we get our hands dirty like the Dalai Lama, like Thich Nhat Hanh, and like our Holy Father, Pope Francis. But there are many who've espoused their lives to God and they live lives of pure luxury and hedonism and they are not meeting Christ in the poor. So we pray for all our Franciscan brothers and sisters within the Christian family that we all unite together and in the spirit of Francis and Claire touch hearts. We pray for Sister Corazon de los Santos a third order Franciscan in Winnipeg, Canada, her son Daniel, <clears throat> and also for her brother Faustian. We pray also for Deirdre in Northern Ireland, for her son who's at uh, university in Leeds, or Sheffield. We pray also for Caroline on the Isle of Wight, for Sister Veronica Paul, one of our Twitter friends, for Skip and all our friends on Google Hangouts, for our friends on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and I said Twitter, but we pray for those who've no one to pray for them. And we pray for Sister Nancy and the work that the Lord is guiding her to do with the poorest of the poor, where she lives in Mexico, where she's just moved to, where she encountered a really challenging experience the other day when she found that they had nothing and that many were hungry and that the homeless only get one meal a day, barely one meal a day. So we pray that the Lord, her provider, will show our dear sister the way forward. An amazing woman is dear Nancy, an amazing woman. And please God, the Lord will provide. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Give to each one of us here tonight our daily bread. 
Forgive us our indiscretions, our stupidity and selfishness. Forgive us our stubbornness of heart. Forgive us for using the NLP processing program to always want to have answers to our questions. Open our hearts so that we can hear what you are saying, not what the head is telling us, and that we discern your inner voice, that we follow it, that we acknowledge it, that we respect it, and that we be a people of prayer and power in your name. Lead us not astray, but protect us from the forces of evil, negativity and despair, laziness and idleness. Help us to unite as the children of God, called by name, carved in the hands of God. Amen. Let us pray, <clears throat> and this is a lovely prayer book, Prayers for Peace, by the late Cardinal Basil Hume and the Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. Ronald Runcie. And this is um, an anonymous Hindu prayer. Loving Father, Mother God, perfect teacher, patient guide, in these troubled times sitting with you, the perfect one, I take the influence of your company to teach me the way of reconciliation, wisdom and harmony. I see you the embodiment of all solutions for the world and myself at this time. Touch my heart and my conscience daily that all I do will work towards your goal of perfection and peace for mankind. Wow, we learn so much, don't we, from other beliefs? Well, I have. My spiritual journey has been enriched, enriched by welcoming into our community brothers and sisters of different beliefs. Let us pray. Father, Mother, God, you have called each one of us here by name. We thank you, Lord, for honouring your promise, honouring your word to us, that when we call on you, you will hear us and that you will answer our prayer. Thank you for touching dear sister Jacqueline and easing her pain. Thank you also for strengthening our dear sister Jane in Coventry and for all the brothers and sisters of our community, including sister Miriam in New Zealand, Buffy in New York, Eleanor in Philadelphia, Nancy in Mexico, Olivia in Cumbria, Teresa in Manchester, Diane in Lancashire, with Brother Brian and Matthew in America, with Liam in London, with Brother Rob, Brother Paul, Brother Murray, Brother Harry, and all the others who live their hermetic life. And I pray for myself. Amen. As I blow out this light, I thank the Lord Christ for touching your heart now. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve the God of many names. Namaste. Shalom. Inshallah. Paxet bonum. Om shanti. Solo di caritas. Salam alaikum. And may the peace of our loving God bestow upon you and your loved ones God's inner peace and health till we meet again. Peace. Peace.